Well, hello and welcome to another episode here on Nightscape Images. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I did a video talking about the concept of deconstructing an image. And then after a little while, I've been thinking about that and I thought perhaps that could be a little confusing for some of you. And um, so what I thought I'd do is just go through some images here and show you exactly what I'm talking about. Now, specifically when I'm talking about deconstructing an image, the most important thing that you will be able to see by watching another image is how it is lit. Now, specifically with my images, I've got about 10 images to show you here. And I wanna go through how I lit them and how you can work out how I lit them. Uh, I hope that makes sense. So uh, anyway, let's get into it right now. This is the first image. This image was taken quite a long time ago and it is a simple single shot with one side light. Now, if you have a look at this image, you can pretty much work out that the light is coming from the left-hand side. And the reason for that is, well, you've got a shadow here from this tree, for example. The light is hitting this tree and shadowing the rock. There's a fair bit of light on that rock face, and there's a big shadow here hiding this little angle in there. Come over to the other side here, and you can see this rock here, which is actually hidden behind this shrub this bush here, because the light has all come from over on this side. In essence, this is a single shot with the light coming from the left hand side for probably about maybe four or five seconds. From memory, I think this was about a 20 second exposure. Typically, I don't light for the full duration because you can easily blow out the highlights. Uh, and this image is not, oh, it's not bad. Look, it's, a, it's an old image, but uh, it's okay. Just certainly helps to illustrate my point. Now I'm going to move on to another image taken at the same place. Now this is very similar to the last one and I want you to see uh, that this particular image is lit from the right hand side. And you can see once again, the light hitting this shrub at the bottom of the uh, right hand side of the image here and actually shadowing onto the rock. Now that's a clear indication of where the light direction is coming from. You can also see this rock face is quite bright and the light falls off as it goes around into that dark crevice. And now as we get further away from the light source, the light falls off and gets a lot duller onto this uh, back rock down here. Now there's a fair bit of distance between the front of this rock face here and the back there. And that's one of the principles of lighting. Lighting always falls off with distance. So the closer you are to your subject, the brighter it will be. For example, this shrub here is quite bright and the highlight, it's quite highlighted because it's close to where the light source was, which is just out, outside the right hand frame here. And as we get further, as you can see, the light falls off. Now that's something to consider with our lighting because when we light images, we need to work out um, whether it's going to be too bright or too soft. And one of the big parts of that is distance from our light source. Now let's move on to another image. This is one of my favorite images of all time, and it is such a simple image. Now this was taken with a 35 millimeter f 1.4 lens. Uh, you can see the specs up here. It's a 10 second shutter speed at ISO 2000. Now this has one single light and it's backlit. So it doesn't have any side or front light at all. It's just lit from the back and you can see the highlights. Now the highlights are what give this away. The highlights are coming from below the hill, which is behind the bike. So you can't actually see the light source, but you can see the effect the light is having on the subject. And um, you can see that the, the, the fog here was highlighted by the light source. And as well as that, as I mentioned before, the highlights, you can see these spider webs. Now, when I was there shooting this, I could not see the spider webs at all. So it's amazing when you light a subject in the, in the middle of the night in pitch black, you can actually see things that you didn't even know were there in the scene. So uh, this is another example of just a single shot. Now, this is one of my uh, artistic shots, I guess you'd say. Now, the stars there are deliberately out of focus because I set my focus to be sharp on the trike itself. And uh, that's what we've got here. So remember, this is just a single light source exactly from behind. I've talked a fair bit about portrait lighting principles. And what I'm talking about here with all of these images is taking advantage of portrait lighting principles. 
Okay, now the next image and from here on the lighting gets a little bit more complicated. But before I move on too far, I want to show you the lights that I use. For every single one of these images, I've used this light as my primary light source. This is a LED Lenser P7.2 flashlight torch. Uh, it's dimmable. I've showed you this on heaps of videos and it works a treat. It is fantastic because I can actually paint light into my images and that's of course why it's called light painting but you know we take things for granted sometimes we think that we can just throw any old light in there and it will do the job well i can tell you now that any light will certainly light the subject but some lights are better than others and this is a real good one the other one i use is this particular one here which is an led light panel and you can see there this is the z96 video light that i often talk about it's got an orange gel with a magnetic attachment and that's a really handy thing uh, and I'll show you some images here in a minute um, because this is uh, generally used for low level lighting. You can see it's dimmable there so you can just put that onto a, a smaller or, or a greater extent depending on what you want and it's fantastic for lighting inside of buildings or for uh, larger uh, subject matter like trees. I call it architectural lighting but low level lighting can be used to light hills, it can be used to light mountain ranges as long as you can get close enough with the light. Uh, so they're really really good. So now I'm going to move on to my next image and this is lit from two different sides. So let's get into that one. Now what you can see here is this beautiful simple little composition with the Milky Way behind the tree and the rocks. Firstly I want to draw your attention to the right hand side of this image and you can see on the side of this tree there is a highlight on the right hand side. Also you can see a, a definite highlight across the right hand side of this rock. The grass in the foreground is the same but on the left hand side there's a shadow fall off and certainly you can see the shadow here it falls off on that side. Now that looks pretty good but when we move over to the left hand side we can see the exact opposite. What we're seeing here is highlights on the left hand side of this rock and the front and the grass here and it falls off as it gets into here into these areas. It's got this classic what I would classify as cross lighting. Now this is, brings a very important uh, principle into play. This is not lit from the camera angle. So in other words, it's not lit from front on, it's lit from side on and only side on. And that is the key to a great lighting composition. Once again, I just used the torch. So I uh, moved from this side to light that side of the tree, moved back to this side for the other one. Now, once again, this is, uh, these are 10 second shutter speeds and I've blended two images together here at f2.8 35 millimeter focal length at ISO 1600 and they're blended so these I couldn't possibly do all of this in 10 seconds as well as capturing the background. Let's move on this is a similar image to the one I just showed you this was shot at uh, as a 14 millimeter focal length 20 second shutter speed f2.8 ISO 2500. Now once again I want to draw your attention to where the light is coming from. If I wanted to explain to you where the light's coming from my first comment would be where are the highlights in the image. Okay so let's have a bit of a look. There's a definite highlight down here. I'll zoom in a fraction you can't see a whole lot there but there's something's happening in this area you can see that fence line and then as you draw up closer to this tank here you can see a definite uh, highlight here on the tank and this edge. So that's obvious that the light is coming from the left hand rear. Now another dead giveaway for that is there's hardly any light on the front bit of the tank here. So the light is coming from here, it's not lighting the front because the front isn't accessible with the light on that angle. There's a bit of light up here on the windmill as you can see and because the blades are angled it's only hitting some of them. So there's light here, down here it's a bit hidden I think from the structure. If you have a, a bit of a squeeze down the bottom of the image here you can see there's light in this bottom left hand corner. So what does that mean? Well it's pretty obvious. What happened was I lit the back of the tank and then ran myself around ragged around here to get to this side. Remember I only had 20 seconds to do this because I think this is a single shot. So I ran around and put a little bit of light into this front corner. Now I did that without really lighting this feature here at all because I still wanted to retain those dark and shadowy areas here. If I had lit from here that would light this front bit and it would light all of this and it wouldn't have the same dynamics. For me these nightscape images need to have dynamics. They need to have 
some structure and like I said to you before highlights shadows and dark areas so I really like the fact that there's a bit of highlight down the front here and on the edge of this fence which has come from this light light placed here but in the middle there's a fair bit of darkness and so there's a light fall off in this middle area from both of the angles and I actually like that okay so let's move on to our next shot again this is a single image and I want to try and explain this similar to what we've just done so we've got a this is an 18 millimeter focal length so this is shot with the Nikon 14 to 24 f 2.8 20 second shutter speed at ISO 2000 so we've got the uh, beautiful Orion the constellation we've got this gorgeous little car facing it it's almost like looks like it's at the drive-in or something uh, surveying the screen that's in front of it but anyway how do we light it well look just look for the highlights there's definite highlights across the grass here but the light has hit the left hand side of the vehicle but it falls off when it gets to the back so once again remember what I said what we do is we look for where the highlights are and we look for where the shadows are so it's really obvious the light is coming from this way also obvious that there's a light coming from this right hand rear now you will notice there's definitely a pattern emerging in my lighting techniques this is also cross lit there is no lighting coming from the direct camera angle at all and in fact I would go as far as to say that the angle of light is is about nearly 90 degrees on both sides away from the camera and that gives you this gorgeous uh, area of almost nothing in the middle here but it's that area of nothing that makes the image dynamic and stand out from just a bland front lit shot it's, it's a fairly simple composition nothing that complicated in any way but as far as deconstructing the image you can see what I'm talking about okay so uh, I want to move on to another one now this is oh, it's a gorgeous shot I love this now this is taken with a 35 millimeter lens a Sigma art 35 with a Nikon D750 now what I did with this one um, I actually shot the background I haven't got it here to show you but I shot the background sky focused on the sky and the building was in darkness and this is my classic blending technique and then what I did I uh, focused onto the building and I think I probably stopped it down a little bit uh, in aperture wise but not much because I can tell that by the grass being out of focus here so let, let's just say it was shot at about f4 nevertheless we're talking about the lighting here so once again we've got light coming from the left hand side now it's getting a bit monotonous here isn't it so I, after this video you guys will be able to deconstruct my images without any troubles whatsoever so you can see the light here is as a definite highlight on that front corner of the building and that is a dead giveaway that the light has come from over here somewhere and once again highlights down here in the grass which gradually fall off the further you get across and you can actually see some shadows going across the building here and what's happened there is it's fallen over the edge of the stonework and the brickwork on the building now this is another key whenever you're lighting stone or bricks when you light it from an angle you will start to see the mortar lines now you can let's come in a bit closer see the shadows now you will not get those shadows in the mortar lines like that if you light it from front on or even nearly front on because you just can't see them the majority of the light in this image appears to be coming from the left uh, side on front so there's nothing inside the building I'll get to that in a minute there could be a, a light coming from this bottom right hand side but if it is it's not doing very much because this is where the giveaway is now it seems to be the highlights on the right hand side which indicates to me that the light is coming from the left hand side so once again this is the concept of what I'm talking about here when you really study an image you can work out where the lighting is coming from and that is the whole point of this particular video so of course I'm running the risk of being very repetitive here but I know that the best way of learning anything is to repeat the steps over and over and over now it's difficult to actually teach anybody how to be creative but in the sense of the lighting and the lighting is a very creative art form when it comes to my nightscapes in fact my nightscapes are based around foreground lighting um, I've spent a lot of time working on uh, how to photograph the sky and the Milky Way and all those other things but the where the rubber hits the road for me is actually 
the lighting of the foreground and how I do go and go about that. So that's why I'm repeating these steps. Now the next images I'm going to show you are a little more complicated or I'm adding another element or a dy uh, dynamic to the image. So let's get back into it. Okay, now what we're doing here is, even though this is a relatively simple image, I've added another dimension that I haven't uh, talked about so far, and that's flash. Now, when I talked about those torches before, I forgot I had this image in there, but nevertheless, that's okay. You'll notice on this particular shot that there's a fair bit of an orangey glow coming from this uh, left-hand side of the image. You can see it down here. You can also see it here. And that is caused by my Z96 video light with the orange gel on the front. So this is still only a two light shot. But what you will notice here, we'll go in a little bit tidy and you can see there's a rim light around me. Now this is the selfie. And you can see that that light is coming from the other side of this. And what I did, I had a flash on a stand just below the level of that so that when it flashed, it, it caused this rim light, but it wasn't shining on any of the rest of the scene. It just basically went off into midair above. Now that flash was set to rear curtain sync. And I'm gonna do more videos about flash and lighting and syncing and all those sorts of things. But uh, just for the benefit of this video, I had my camera here with a flash trigger on the top. I also had one in my pocket and I pressed that to actually release the shutter of the camera. And then at the end of the exposure, which was 20 seconds, you can see it up here. This is a 14 millimeter focal length at f2.8 at ISO 2500. Yeah, so this is taken with the Nikon 14 to 24. Uh, and that flash went off at the end of the 20 seconds. And so the idea of that is that standing up there for 20 seconds is very difficult to do without moving. So we tend to sway. And when you sway around, even though there's a silhouette created because the Milky Way there is behind, it's going to create a shadow. So by having the flash go off at the end of the exposure, that somewhat alleviates the shadow because it gives a highlight around there rather than the shadow. So you can see once again, when you zoom in a little bit, you can see there's a highlight around the body. And that sort of offsets the fact that there's been a shadow there. So that's a pretty simple concept, but a lot of people get really confused about flash and I totally understand that. It does take a fair bit of getting used to, but once again, and I refer back to what I said earlier in this video, I'm using portrait lighting principles for these landscape images. Okay, let's move on. Now this is an image, oh, I love this image. It's, uh, it's an old barn out in the countryside, dark sky, beautiful location. And you can see here, I've got the gorgeous Milky Way here rising up in the eastern horizon above this building. In the background, there's a few old dead trees just to give us a bit of drama. And there's no light down here at all. That's just total ambient blackness, which I like. Now, let's move over to the left-hand side of this image. And you can see straight away, once again, remember how I mentioned to you about the bricks? and how you, you want to see the mortar lines in the bricks. Now, if I lit that from the camera angle, in other words, straight on here, you would not see those mortar lines very nicely at all. So what we've done, we've got a light coming from over here, just out of camera on the left-hand side, uh, lighting up this, these bricks. You can see the ground down here as well. It's beautifully side lit. Yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous. You can see the bricks there and it comes to, it's actually lit more at the back here than it is at the front. And that's an obvious uh, indicator that there's light fall off from this side, falling off to here, which is typical of any light source that falls off with distance. The other thing I like is this corrugated iron, but you can see very clearly there that the top of the iron is highlighted and in the troughs of the iron is shadowed. Again, very typical of lighting from the side angle. If I lit that from the front, you would just have that all lit. There wouldn't be the highlights and there wouldn't be the shadows. And that makes all the difference to the dynamics of this particular image. Okay, now let's have a look at this side. So you can see I've lit from the left-hand side, but there's also quite a bit of light coming from the right-hand side. So if we zoom in a little bit on the right-hand side of the image, as you can see here, the light, there's light coming from over here somewhere. Now it's probably possible that what I did here was stand about here and just lit the side of the barn and the edge of these bricks. And you can see once again, the fall off here, it's much brighter on this section 
than it is here and I have deliberately created that dark shadow on the corner and you might think when you're first taking these images oh it's too dark in that corner so I'll throw a bit of light in there my suggestion is to resist that urge and leave that darkness in that corner because in the total picture it makes sense and if you were to go outside and say there was a street light down the road here shining onto this building that's exactly what it would look like it would be dark on this corner and light as you get further closer towards the light and imagine there's another light source on this side all I'm doing is creating the my own lighting um, because there's none there it's a completely dark environment now one other dynamic I want to show you here on this building if you look in here if you look inside the building you can see that there's a light coming from the inside and in fact you can see it coming under the door here through the gap here above those doors there's a light that's shining inside the building it's no coincidence that's my Z96 with the orange gel inside the building now I haven't just chucked it in there and hoped for the best I've deliberately placed it so that the light up here is doing the same thing that I got on the outside it's just in a different position uh, and when you look down here well it's less obvious here probably but the light is actually probably placed towards the back of the building facing back out there's a, probably a little bit of spillage here yeah there is just there a bit hard to see because it's overpowered by the lighting at the front but nevertheless you can see what I'm talking about so this is actually lit from three different places when you look at the full screen image it looks absolutely fantastic and this is typical of the type of lighting that I try to achieve this is a fairly simple example of it um, I've got a couple more complicated ones coming up in a minute but you know you have to try with the simple stuff and just gradually improve your technique as much as you possibly can now here's another building very similar to the last image this one I put this, this one in because I guess it, it really illustrates the highlights and the shadows and the fall off this image you got the Milky Way in the background now I know for certain this is a single shot of the Milky Way just one shot but I took about three or four shots on the outside of the building and blended them all together now I do this quite often if you've seen my videos you'd be able to already see that so let's just have a look at this shot the background image is ambient light you can see the light down on the horizon here which is coming from a town off in the distance there I don't mind when you have a little bit of light pollution like this because see what it's doing it's highlighting the beautifully this tree here now if you look clearly closely here let me just go in a bit closer see how that tree there is moving so that indicates it was windy on the night it's moving in that uh, 20 seconds and you'll get this quite often with once you start long exposures at night time trees blow around in the wind and that's an example of it but when you when you see the full image out like it is now y your eye is certainly not drawn to that and you wouldn't even know this tree doesn't look too bad let's have a look at the rest of the image once again you can see down the bottom here some highlights and on the edge of this grass here coming from the right hand side and certainly at the back of this building you can see the highlights on the back of the building on the side here they're only coming from the back and you can see hopefully let's get a bit closer you can see the highlights on this grass down the bottom and that's a, a giveaway a dead giveaway that the light source is coming from over here somewhere all right now if we look at the rest of the image it's obvious once again there's a there's a light inside which is that orange gel covered z96 panel light typically that's what I'll use inside buildings I like to warm them up it looks like there's somebody home maybe there's a fire going in the fireplace or something like that and then of course we've got lights over here so there's an area here where you can see light coming now when you zoom in really really close you can see that this grass is moving so it was a bit windy on this particular night nevertheless you can still see where the light angle is coming from from the back of the building here to the front of the building so it's brighter here at the back than it is at the front and once again that is indicative of my method now some of you are going to be keen and ask me well what about the roof line up here and all, all this well very well observed because that is lit separately and I've done this plenty of times because this is corrugated iron but it's quite hard to light because it's high it's a long way up uh, and sometimes it's really hard to get the angles but once again you can see this lit from the left hand side and it's going across the roof line and you can see clearly those corrugations as a chimney especially being a lighter color like that will definitely show uh, the highlights more but in this case I like that because it's a different color to the rest of the building 
the next one this is something quite a little bit different because it doesn't really feature the sky very much um, because there's a little bit of blue hour happening when I shot this but what it does feature is my method of lighting and I want to show you this because this this is a gorgeous structure and you can see when we go in close probably going in a bit too close let's just go out a fraction you can see how the light once again it's lit from down here lighting upwards now on this particular one I remember standing just here and lighting up from the bottom and that's why you can see here if you look closely there here you can see the shadows on that brickwork and the stones and I deliberately wanted to achieve that and that light source by the way is not really spilling over onto the back because if it did you would uh, see that highlight like you can see here on this side so it hasn't done that it started down the front here and going up now conversely I've got a light on the other side of the building and just lit it from the other side once again with a deliberate attempt to get those mortar lines to show out in the stonework and I think it's done that pretty well now the other thing is pretty obvious here there's an archway and I lit the archway as a separate exposure because the arches it's pretty big and actually I've done a video on this particular structure not this shot but another time that I was at this this old gold mine and I'll link that above here but uh, you can see that's lit with the archway now at the front here I really like this beautiful old timber work and the rocks and the bricks and things here I shot that at f13 because I wanted to get uh, more detail especially close up to the camera here and you can see that beautiful fall off of light so this here is lit from above and it's shining down on about a 60 degree angle down here and you can see what happens there's a darkness on the side of this bolt light on that side light here dark here same here there's light all through here and dark in there where the light's not creeping into so once again now over this side I think you'll find that this is lit uh, from a different place because there's a darkness there and a lightness there so it's probably lit from above up on the left hand side if you check that it's probably coming down from here somewhere and of course over in the in the distance there you can see there's more lighting because this is quite a large structure it took a fair bit of uh, images to actually get this to come out the way it does now now just to give you an idea of what this looks like with just a single exposure without all this light painting have a look at this one so there it is uh, it's pretty bland in comparison isn't it it just doesn't have the same dynamics that the other image has there's no comparison really between those two and yeah so I don't think you can argue with that one so once again I've showed you a few images there and you know there's a lot of the same repetitive steps in there but I think it's really important for you to see close up some of the detail of how I've gone about shooting these now I've only got one more image to show you and I'll do that fairly quickly uh, but this is an image that has got a lot of attention from people when it comes to this method that I call fine art light painting so I want to show you this old truck this old ute and let's go from there okay so here is our old truck now it's a beautiful scene and I remember when I first found this I thought what an absolute gold mine this is and I spent a fair bit of time shooting this image and you can actually see the a bit more detailed process of this image in the video listed above here in the background I took one shot this is only one image beautiful southern cross here bit of cloud cover and uh, a fair bit of light pollution coming from actually the town of Melbourne in the background which you know like I said previously a little bit of light pollution isn't a problem as long as it doesn't blow out the whole sky and once again it silhouetted these trees really nicely now when it comes to the lighting of this image here this is a much more complex image than all of the others that I've showed you so far and I guess the reason for that is because I wanted to put it at the end here rather than um, complicate everything I just want to highlight some of the areas of this to help you deconstruct this particular image firstly we've got highlights for example here on this fence now that totally indicates a light source coming from this side but then we've got highlights here on this side of the truck so that indicates light coming from this side we've got highlights here but we've got shadows there once again the lights coming from here uh, and here 
as I said, we've got, you can see a shadow there from that headlight. So that definitely indicates a light source coming from over here somewhere. I guess my advice for you guys is to look for highlights because the highlights are a dead giveaway where the light source is. We've got definite highlights at the back here, but it's quite dark and shadowy underneath that mudguard. Highlight on the edge here, but dark as it moves down underneath. There's a shadow there right there indicates that there's a light source somewhere over this side shining across onto that headlight and it's only getting that section of it. And I'll show you some of the individual frames of this shot now so you can get an idea of how it was lit and how each individual image looked. What happens is some of the light crosses over and when you blend all of these together and you end up with the final image that you see here, there's not so many lines to sort of make it look a little bit uh, blurry or not quite defined and you get these areas like this grass down the bottom here and they just blend in. Now of course that's a simplified way of explaining what I've done because what I tend to do is I'll go into Photoshop and use layer masks to actually blend and mask and shadow some areas and I can get into certain spots on the image and completely rub it out because I mightn't like it. It might be too much light and I find that typically a lot of these shots when I shoot multiple exposures when I'm shooting some of them I don't use in the end. I, I, it might be a nice shot by itself, but it just doesn't add to the image. That's my method for lighting. And I'm hoping that this helps you to understand how I go about it and some of the tools that I use. And I have to say, this would be still one of my all time favorite images, even though I took it about three years ago. A lot of people still comment on this image and that's the image there where I coined the term fine art light painting for my landscapes. So I hope now after this description of some of these images here that you've got a little bit better idea of how you would go about deconstructing an image. So uh, you can look back at some of mine, you can look at other people's images and just sort of get an idea of, oh, that's how they lit, they lit it from there, they did that, they did that. Some of the images are harder than others to, to deconstruct, others are really simple as I've showed you here today. So uh, anyway, look, if you have any comments or questions, please put them down below and I'd be really happy to answer those and help as much as I possibly can. And if you really feel uh, like you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I would be delighted to have you on board. So anyway, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. And until then, you have a fantastic day.